This is Twit. Already, we hadn't even started, and people are complaining about all the Apple coverage we've been doing. Yeah, but you know what I have to say to that? What? We don't deal with terrorists. We're going to talk about the M1 chip. <laughs> I, you know, I think we can make a case that this is a watershed moment in desktop computing. We can. We can make that case. That's not By unfair. the way, it is. Um, or it will be probably. We'll see next week. I mean, I think the big issue with what just happened is we've been waiting since June for all these answers. Right. And now we know what co the first computers are, and that's neat. But we actually don't have any answers at all. To any of the most pertinent <laughs> no, problems. They didn't even mention clock speed at very aptly of them. Nothing. It, 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 was, uh, uh, it was a master class in uh, an overwhelming amount of data that amounted to nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it all sounded good. You know what it well, reminded like, me of? Probably, Microsoft earnings where they say yes, Azure's exactly. up 15 times of right. blah, blah, blah. Right. It's like, yep, oh, 15 times of what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love the performance over what? I love the graphs with no numbers, just yeah. lines and bars, but no numbers. <laughs> It's a graph. Well, you know why? They used, uh, they used uh, their their numbers program, and it doesn't have that capability. <laughs> it doesn't have numbers. In it. <laughs> uh, very good, though, article this morning in a non-tech where they, you know, it's interesting how much, because they're chip guys, they can look at the few bits and pieces, including mm -hmm. uh, one picture of the, of the silk screen, and kind of right. deduce a lot from it. And it, we'll, uh, we'll see. see. I'm, I'll, I'll have one in a week or two. And, but it does sound like that, uh, at least the people who are saying, oh, ARM, it can't possibly be performant. Uh, oh, I don't, that's nonsense. That uh, probably nonsense. is not the case. And this is, listen, we, we got we to gotta kind of level set here because we can talk benchmark scores, right? Which kind of don't mean anything, frankly. And we don't and have any yet. So. The, the important, yeah. yeah, the important thing here is, well, the two things. It's it's the same thing that's important on the Windows side. It's performance and compatibility. And those both take right. on a, a bunch of different things because performance is, you know, native performance, performance of emulated x86 apps, which is going to be most apps in the beginning. Right. Um, and performance of iPad apps, which I think has got a big deal for this transition. And then compatibility, obviously application compatibility, but also they, and they never mentioned the word driver, not even once. One of the big kind of hidden problems with moving Windows to ARM is that not one of the drivers out yeah. there in the world that works on x86, on you know the Intel type platform, works on ARM, and Apple hasn't addressed that. Now, Apple's well, they Apple, make all the hardware, so yeah. So, at, well, they don't make all the third-party hardware. No, so, if you're a lot of with hardware. a printer or a scanner or yeah. you know, I mean, how does that work? I mean, they haven't said. It's what did such they a say about how apps? work in emulation did they give any details of that at all no. nothing no, no. Uh, although the few things we've heard are that things like um what what example did they give lightroom or uh, work as uh, they're as fast in rosetta 2 their emulator mm -hmm. as they are on the old intel platform so and i think that that may so, be the case the way, there, there's going to be significant that, speed improvement from the n1 for instance it has a unified memory architecture memory is on the die which means yeah. it's, okay. right, right. I mean, that's what the gaming machines have been doing. That's what Xbox has done since the first days. And so, it makes a big difference in speed. If you go back a couple of months, um, there were rumors that kind of went up and down about which products would come first. And one of the big rumors, which didn't come true exactly, was the first ARM-based Mac was going to be a an old school, like the MacBook, the, skin, the small one, the fanless one, that they don't make anymore. And um, that would indicate that this thing is like a low end device, and maybe we shouldn't expect a level. Yeah, they of avoided that. Interestingly, yeah, they yeah. avoid. Yeah, they they did and they didn't because if you think about the machines they did announce, they are all the low end versions of everything, right? So the the MacBook Air is the Y series processor. Now that's an ARM device, um, and then the MacBook Pro 13 inch and the Mac Mini. Both uh, are examples of devices that span like a huge range of performance and capabilities. And the versions that are going to M1 are the low-end versions, right? So on the MacBook Pro, that means the two-port version uh, for the Thunderbolt ports. And on the Mac Mini, it means it only, you know, and actually on all these machines, They're it only all goes up to 16 gigs of RAM. Yeah, and 16 yeah. gigs of RAM. But so, we, we just don't know in that environment what 16 gigs means. I know. It's well, this not is the thing. It's not you can't how, compare how do you walk it? away from this event not knowing things. <laughs> like this well, because this they're not going to say they're not going to say well 
But they never, they don't even ever give you a RAM figure for the iPhone. The fact that they no, even no, mention look, RAM is amazing. Let's go back in time for a second. Because remember, they, and of course, they brought out the Mac guy, right, from the old ads, John, uh, John Hodgman. Which I loved. Um, back in the day, when the PowerPC was a running concern and Apple was desperate to show that it was better than Intel, they would put two machines next to each other. And they would have Photoshop run some, you know, macro or whatever. And the Mac version would always come out first, always, right? And they would always, obviously highlight the things where your platform's better than the other platform. And uh, at the time, I would have and did describe a lot of that stuff as chicanery. It was nonsense. You know, Intel at that time was better at integer math. Uh, PowerPC was better at, um, you know, different kinds of things, whatever. But t they didn't even do that. <laughs> they just, it was like, you know, flashy, you know, graphic, shoot down the hall, 6X. <laughs> and you're like, what? Well, who is the audience, oh. though? Who is the audience for this thing supposed to be, right? Tech journalists, obviously, but who else? Well, at this point, developers <laughs> uh, and then anybody who's really interested in Macintosh computers yeah. is concerned uh, yeah. because we're seeing a platform shift. And so, right. you know, the concern I hear from a lot of people is, oh, you know, oh, you don't want the first one of these. Who knows what it's going to be like? There are real concerns, legitimate concerns about compatibility with existing third-party software. Which they never addressed. They sort of addressed. Right. They said Lightroom will be available this year. They said Lightroom Photoshop and then next these year. other six other apps no one's ever heard of. Is, <laughs> well, okay. Example Mac users have heard of the ones they, they mentioned. Those okay. are all, uh, but the developers they showcased were all Mac's developer celebrities, C mm -hmm. like Cable Sasser from Panic. Their guys have been on the Mac platform but, for a long time, and on. Mac I users mean, know. The, the, right. the Omni Group I, I, people. I, those are still not volume unit sales of apps. I mean, no, I mean, they didn't I, have Microsoft, Microsoft on stage. Not yeah. mentioned once. Yeah. Now, and that's, the, I, that's what I find fascinating. Because there could have been a very real-world example where they said, look, here's Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Word or whatever. It, it comes up. It's just blah, blah, blah. It works. It's just as fast or whatever percentage is fast. Mm -hmm. And this isn't even ported over. Now, here's the the M1 version. And, oh, my God, it's mm -hmm. amazing. Like, it, is, no, it's, it goes so fast. There's not even a splash screen. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to come out later. This was a 45-minute presentation. Right, right. They announced three new computers and a new processor architecture in 45 minutes. There will be a lot more information to come. I'm yeah. Sure. I, you know, I, 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 saw some, I, I saw some people in the Microsoft world speculating, what if they show cloud PC running on a Mac to, and Microsoft <laughs> apps? And I'm like, you know what? They're not going to waste cloud PC on an Apple event. But at some point, that, that demo could happen, right? Showing sure. how on a Mac you could run virtually your well, microsoft well, run apps. thing i mean that would run on a chromebook so yeah it should you know i i the the, the trick to look apple's done this before we've talked about that i mean they've done this process of transition i mean the trick is to run old software well which mm -hmm. is hard and and to provide developers a uh, an upgrade path so that they can make their existing apps better without a lot of work you know yeah and um, the silence from the Microsoft side to me is a little interesting because, mm -hmm. you know, they've been busy mm -hmm. porting or trying to port Office in particular, Edge, whatever, to this new platform. They and mentioned that at, uh, at WWDC and the Microsoft was at WWDC. So the developer right. conference. Which makes their absence at this thing all the more notable, you know. Mm -hmm. They're not ready. It's not ready. Yeah, maybe yeah. that's it's, it. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the fantasy story is if you're an app developer... You get a new version of Xcode. It supports these new universal apps. You check a box. Probably don't even have to check the box. It's probably checked for you. And you're creating a universal app now. It will run on both Intel or, or uh, Apple Silicon. Mm -hmm. And that's not how it really works, right? Because <laughs> the truth is you mm -hmm. have to then go in. There's problems, and you have to go fix them. And there's some degree of difficulty. And we'd like to pretend it's a simple flick of a switch, mm -hmm. but it's not. And if you make something complicated, and, you know, Adobe Lightroom is a good example of something complicated, Photoshop, and obviously Office. Um, there's a lot more work that needs to be done. Yeah. And uh, we'll see. Bring an iPad app running on the Mac. Simple, comparatively speaking. The good news is we're going to see, I mean, you know how the enthusiasts are with this stuff. We're going to see benchmarks. We're going to see oh, yeah. mm -hmm. all of this stuff in a week. It's coming out. It's, yeah. uh, people well, have ordered really it. Hoping it's is coming people Friday. People review uh, who got these things for review. And before then, right? They will. Sometime yeah, yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. I think a week from now we'll start seeing those reviews. Yeah, I would hope so. Mm -hmm. And that's that's going to be the first time. That's going to be the 
I thought we were going to have this moment yesterday, but <laughs> it's going to be next Tuesday, let's say. You know, this is an advertisement. I mean, the Apple yeah. doesn't need to go crazy with specs and speeds and feeds. That's not Apple. No, you want to drag it out too, right? Like the PR cycle, you want it <laughs> to just good. keep going and going and going. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> but you know what? It is an advertisement, and that's a good point. And I, but the way you advertise this is we're, we're giving you a box that is literally identical to the previous box. We have not changed a thing. We've swapped out something inside of it. It's basically it. It's completely incompatible mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. thing you're using now, but we're going to make it work. It seems to me the advertising involves better battery life, yep. acceptable, equal, or better performance wherever it falls. Uh, pricing, maybe they basically held the line on price. I think the Mac Mini might be a little cheaper. And then you got to talk. You have like it's. Isn't it really about compatibility? That should, mm -hmm. isn't, instead of talking about, you know, processor cores and neural engine, they said, they said the phrase ML 150 times in this presentation. But <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure like, who that, that was for. Are waiting on ML processing. Yeah, I'm not sure who that was for because I'm not, that doesn't, bo yeah. I, well, it's nice that you have eight cores devoted to machine learning, but <laughs> well, I don't know how that helps me. Yeah. Right. I thought that was kind of odd. So. Yeah, yeah I, Apple is very good at advertising. I felt like they could have done a much better job at advertising mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. this thing really is. Mm -hmm. And they didn't. I don't. They basically didn't talk about it at all. Oh. The proof will be in the pudding. I, I think that uh, you know the, these will come out, and we'll see. Um, I want to see the battery life number. That's the main number I want to see because I believe they're going to actually have it. Right, and Microsoft Apple's pretty, doesn't have it. Apple's pretty good about their battery estimates, <laughs> yeah, in my opinion, compared to other manufacturers. Actually, right. So, by the way, Apple's one. Uh, re, just in reviewing laptops, I can say Apple is one of the few companies where they say this thing gets twelve hours of battery life, or whatever right. the figure is. It does. So they're claiming twenty hours for the MacBook Pro. Except right. for they're not. But they're not. See, they're claiming twenty hours for the MacBook Air in video playback. That's the nonsense uh, figure that PC makers right. use. Okay, that's not yes. battery life. Yes. It's it's actually the same. The same. It's comparable to the numbers they give out for the iPhone and the iPad. So I think they're just making yeah. that unified across the board. Yeah. But I I do think. Look, this is clearly the 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 goal of this is to deliver a low power chip that can yeah. beat yeah. Intel, and that's not hard to do these days. Uh, and uh, give you all-day battery life and significant improvements in performance. And I think that's not going to be a question. Compatibility, the point you raised, mm -hmm. is the only yeah. remaining mm -hmm. big question. We'll see numbers well, uh, soon enough. There, it's the remaining question for the first gen. Remember that the other stuff that's not happening here is, God knows how they got Thunderbolt going. That's an Intel thing, but okay, fine. Um, 16 <laughs> gigs of RAM is a seal. No, no, first of all, it's USB 4. Which okay. means, oh, so, so they called it. Okay. yeah, so it is Thunderbolt three downward compatible, and, gotcha. and Apple right. is a, Apple uh, is a developer of that as well. That doesn't require Intel. Okay. Um, but that's anyway. That's just a minor point. I was trying to slide by, but um, sixteen gigs of RAM is the ceiling. No dedicated GPU. No external GPU. No no more than one external display. Th there's all. This is a, a product line that today, and it, and I know obviously they're working on more stuff. Uh, doesn't address the needs of Apple's Pro customers, right? It, this is all entry-level stuff. So if you're a MacBook Pro customer, typical one, if you need more RAM, if you need dedicated graphics, if you are a Photoshop or a videographer or a, a gamer, not that you'd be a gamer on the Mac or whatever, um, these machines are not for you. I mean, these machines are for college students. They're for normal users. Um, they're just, I mean, and then tech enthusiasts who are just really curious, you know, to see what's going on here. I don't know. Like the Ultrabook, the Ultrabook market, right? Like there are yeah. people who care about battery life and port and the air, actual weight of the machine and the air is going to be a, potentially the best Ultrabook you can buy. The yeah. MacBook Pro is probably not Pro in some respects, but it's comparable yeah. to the current 13-inch MacBook Pro. That's the one the, I ordered. Only the entry level version. Um, yeah, you can get more RAM, I guess, but. Uh, Oh, better it's, processors. Um, what? Well, uh, wait. Better, what? What better processors? It's not clear what better processors. You're saying Intel processors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, so that's not process. clear yet. Uh, yeah. I, well, it will happen over time, right? I well, mean, this is just. I, I don't know that you're way. getting better processors. I think it's very possible the M1, especially given that Apple's doing the operating system level and I, we, we a lot of the apps look, might I, be. Maybe this thing is not going to perform better than a multi-core i7. 
It just isn't. We can't pretend that I this is just happening. I don't know if that's true, Paul. I think you might be wrong on that. All right. We're going to see. We'll see. Mm. Uh, part, mainly, be, a lot, not only, but uh, for a good reason, is that the i7s heat throttled almost always in laptops. Yeah. So it gets, it's bursting up to its top clock well, speed. Well, by the way, goes, I mean, even, even the MacBook Pro with the M1 has active cooling with a fan, right? I mean, yeah. so they're, yeah. they're, they're pushing those things, too. Um, the other thing is, you know, not that MacBook motherboards are particularly big. They're not. They're actually kind of they're small little things. But um, theoretically, these things require less power. Not theoretically, literally less power, um, uh, less um, thermals, fewer, fewer thermals, whatever. There should be more room in these cases, right? So, you know, mm -hmm. sometime down the road that we're going to see like new generation form factors as well. But they're sticking with the exact, literally the exact same form factors, which is fine. But doesn't that, I mean, it seems to me like that leaves more room for battery. Yeah, you like, should see the difference in the logic board Yeah, from the new to the old. The new is the size of an SO dim. Almost everything's in that system on yeah, the chip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you can put more battery in there. You um, could. Which mm -hmm. maybe okay. they did. You know, who, who knows? knows? I don't know. They, we'll, mm -hmm. All of that will be revealed in a week. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I think the big mistake, and we'll see, but my guess is the big mistake is to treat it like a PC and say, and compare it apples to apples on a PC. Like, well, the clock speeds are lower, the RAM is lower, you know. I don't know if that's going to be a fair comparison. I think you have a whole new platform. No, it's got to, it's, this is about launching Word and a browser and Photoshop and, and then using it and not having lag and, and whatever. I mean, yeah, that's right. Jo yeah, job that's one right. is just actually, making that happen that's the compatibility angle and then job two is making it happen fast let's not forget though perform. apple has its own office suite and so i don't know how incented right. they are i mean i think they realize that you've got to make office work <laughs> well it's but, microsoft's yeah. the one who should care about that right they, they don't want to be left behind so uh i obviously they're working on that um but i think these apps you know they're kind of big and complicated i that's the unknown. That's a big unknown, which is how hard is it to make it, make an Intel app work on the M1? Yeah. That's really a big unknown. Apple keeps saying, oh, no, no, it's easy, easy, easy. We shall see. It may well be that it's it's more iOS apps get get, get moved to yeah. Mac but, OS. You know, by the way, <laughs> even that process has proven more difficult to developers um, than Apple kind of promised, you know, at a year ago's WDBC, or maybe it was two years ago, whenever that was, Um you know that's not that's not a checkbox either, right? I mean, yeah. once you move a, a mobile app, which is touch first and all that stuff, to a desktop platform, you have to, you don't have to, but you should take into account the different types of ways that uh, users will interface with the app, and it should maybe adapt to look more like a traditional Mac app or whatever. Um, there's issues there too, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I look, all we can do is speculate, and that's that stinks because I was hoping to come away with some. Something, some mm. definitive mm. something, something. Well, this is it's faster <laughs> than 98% of PC laptops. <laughs> yes, no, like asterisks. Um, <laughs> right. with, <laughs> That's this some which one? Best selling <laughs> PC in this category. By the way, this PC is in a category all by itself. Yeah, it is. You know, yeah, I don't know. I don't know.